This here podcast is for a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You never know, we might be talking about spirituality and wellness, relationships, whatever it is that you do to get your money, be it working somewhere, be it running your own thing, be it having a side hustle, it's all good over here. We are getting organized, we are handling our time management better, and we are having fun through it all. Because over here, it's all love, all light, and good vibes only. So, if you are interested in living, laughing, and learning, growing, and glowing, drinking your water, and minding your own business, this is the perfect place for you. Hi, I'm Tiff, and welcome. Hey, besties. Hey, boo. Hey, you and you and you and you. I see you over there. I just want to thank you so much for tuning in for another edition of the Life Unscripted Podcast by Organized Energy. I really, really appreciate you just hanging out with me today. And I hope that you have already been enjoying some good things, some wins, some blessings for your day and for your week. Um, For you who show up all the time, you've been a friend to the show for a while, I want to say thank you and welcome back. For those of you who are new to the show, and this might be your first time, I want to say welcome and thank you for being here as well. Um, I want to introduce myself to those of you who are new here. So my name is Tiffany and I am an author and I'm a publisher um, and uh, I am a certified life coach and I've been in business doing something for 21 years and I praise God for that. Um, And so because I've been in business doing one thing or another for 21 years, um, I absolutely love helping other entrepreneurs and small business owners um, navigate things as it pertains to um, business development, um, business strategy, but even personal development because... um, there are things that we need to develop about ourselves so that we can show up as our the best version of ourselves um, at, at home, at work, at school, at play, right? Um, and even in your intimate moments just with yourself. And so um, that being said, the certified life coach in me, um, I love to help people to develop on a holistic level. Um, so that's in, in most or all areas of your life. You know, we just kind of, there's there's got to be, Uh, I don't know if there's a perfect balance that's even possible, but we want to get as close to balance um, as possible. Uh, And so I like to say all things in moderation, right? Just in moderation. Too much of anything can't be too good, right? Um, So anyway, that's who I am. So I teach on those things. I teach on personal, professional, leadership, and brand development, All right. Personal, professional, leadership and brand development. Those are my four wheelhouses that I love to talk about. So I speak. um, So I do speaking engagements. I write books. I create content. um, I I coach one on one and all those things on those topics. All right. So that's a little bit about me. Um, You can even find me over on Amazon. I have a website, of course, Um, uh, but you can find me on Amazon, uh, Amazon dot com slash author slash hey tiff h-e-y-t-i-f-f if you want to check me out um and then the website is organized energy.co organized energy.co is my website so that's a little bit about me um but i want to know about you so make sure you message me um depending on the platform that you use to listen to this podcast um some of the platforms provide you with like a link to leave a message or a comment or a review or whatever so get in touch with me like that um So I know if you listen on Spotify, there is an opportunity for you to leave like an audio uh, recording 
um, to reply back to this episode. Um, but if you go to my website, you can also find the get in touch link or whatever it is called over there and you can reach out to me that way. So let me know who you are. What do you do? What are your interests and passions and what are you really, really good at? And, uh, you know, just let me know what you think about this episode or about the show. Okay. Life in general, check in with me. Okay. I'm a real person and I want to know. All right. Okay. So enough of all the pleasantries. Um, I, I've got something that I want to share with you today, and I hope that um, it helps you, and I hope that it encourages you to think, and I hope that it encourages you to look at your processes and how you do things, um, personally and professionally and otherwise. Um, it's a little bit about emotional intelligence today. Emotional IQ is what I want to talk about today, um, and um I want to tie that in to how does this affect you and your life and your story? Because ultimately, um, the other thing that I do is I help people to tell their stories and to share the things that they are experts at in the form of writing their own books and uh, launching their own podcast. So that's a little side thing that I do is help people to tell their stories and share their expertise through helping them to get their books out there um, created um, and their podcast launch. All right. So that being said, let's talk about today's topic. And so um, I have um, adult children um, and um, they are entrepreneurs And they are so excited for their businesses and they're seeing growth in their businesses and and they get so excited when they get new inquiries and new clients. And and that is so amazing for me as a mom to watch this unfold. Um, And so I'm excited for them. Uh, But I have a daughter, my daughter, um, she has had some amazing clients. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. And then she has some that before they even really like sign contracts and and get the ink and even have the ink dry (laughs) on the contracts, I'm telling her, I'm like, "Mm -mm, mm -mm, not that one, baby, not that one. You know, and you know, you may have heard before, all money's not good money, right? All business isn't good business. Some people, you rather they just keep their coins and take it somewhere else, take them somewhere else, right? Um, and so she is excited and she's like, whosoever shall come, let them come, you know? <laughs> she wants all the coins. And I'm trying to explain to her, baby, you you can't accept all the coins because some people's coins, you just rather just throw the whole bag of pennies at them upside, right upside their heads. <laughs> they just make you so upset sometimes. And um, and so that's where we're going at. We're talking about emotional emotional IQ for today's episode. Um, I, as a mom, can spot certain people a mile away. And I, as a mom, when she's describing um, the the way that things play out um, or how they are responding to um, correspondence, you know, if you know how they're responding to the emails, if they're filling out forms timely, if they're making their deposits timely, if they are canceling appointments rather than you know showing up to the appointments, if they're very difficult up front, you know, I'm like, mm, all these are signs they, they might just be difficult. Uh, when you get into business with them, when you start, you know, this project that they are uh, hiring you to do, uh, they seem like they're not on it when it comes to their time. They're always late. You know, I watch for things. You know, I look for things. I look for I look for um, signs, telltale signs of, of of the character of the person that I'm considering dealing with. Right. And so I look at how do they speak to you? How, how do they regard you? How do they regard other people? How do they speak of past experiences with other professionals? Um, how, how, are, how punctual are they to your appointments? Because on time to me is late. 
First of all, if you show up on time, you're late. I just believe in being a little early for things. I just, I don't know. It's just me. (laughs) I like to be a little early for things. But if you are right on time, okay, cool. But if you are late, like real late, like, you know, actually after the time that you guys uh, uh, um, agreed upon and you're consistently that way, that's a problem for me. Because then now you're disrespectful, in my opinion. In my opinion, you're being disrespectful. Why? Because time is our most precious commodity. If you listen to this show, I probably mention it in every episode because I always thank you guys for listening. And I always tell you that I know that time is our greatest commodity. And I always tell you so I know that you can't once you spend your time, you can't get it back. And so I thank you. I always tell you all that I thank you for spending time with me for the time that you do to listen to the episode. And and I stand on that. I mean that. Time is your greatest commodity. That's the one thing that if you lose that, you can't get it back. You can get money back. You can get all kinds of things back. You, you might can grow your hair back. You might can grow your nails back. You might can. There are some things you might can get back. But time is just not one of them. And so if a person disrespects your time, consistently now running late once or twice okay if they're consistently running late that's not an accident that was a choice that they made and that's just the way they are and so they didn't think about how that might inconvenience you they didn't think about the things that you might need to do you know but now that they're late they're going to make that appointment go over and now you're going to be late for your next thing they don't care you know um they don't care um that you did what you needed to do to show up on time for them, but then they couldn't reciprocate that courtesy and show up on time for you. So they left you waiting and they left you sitting there for however long and whatever. And so anyway, when people seem like they're all over the place and they don't have it together, I look for that. Now, for me, that's like that's a client for me because I work with people on personal development, on time management, on different things as a life coach, as a business coach, as I told you, leadership development coach, all those things, whatever, brand development coach. I help people that are all over the place. But if that is not your wheelhouse and that's not what they're coming to you for, because, you know, people that are a mess is who I need to help help them get it together. If you got it all together, I mean, you know. I may not need to help you, you know, but if that's not what you do, if you're ready to do business with them and you do something totally different, then it's probably not in your best interest that they run late or all over the place or unorganized or uh, whatever, indecisive and wishy-washy and they're in and then they're out and then they want it, then they don't. Then they come back and say, well, I want it after all. That is, that's a lot. And I look for that in people. And that tells me, that mm, I don't know I don't know about that one so I say that to say my daughter was showing was sharing with me um, an opportunity for a person um, for a client to to do some work for her and um, again like I said the person showed up she well she was wishy-washy and real finicky about making the appointment just to kind of meet for coffee and discuss the potential for working together Um, and then um when they finally was able to, to solidify a date, then she was late showing up. And then there were some other things, just back and forth and blah, blah, blah. And then she didn't really want to pay the full price for the services. She was hoping for really deep discounts. And, you know, she didn't really want to respect the, well, the price, you know, I don't know if y'all listen to, uh, if y'all watch uh, uh, Christine Porter, she's a comedian. If y'all might know her as Shirlene, a comedian, but <laughs> goes by the name of Shirlene. But one thing she says, she says, the price is the price. <laughs> and that's what it is. The price is the price. And so when people try to negotiate and finagle you and work you all the way down to next to nothing for the price for their services that they receive from you, you know, that's another sign of disrespect. The price is the price. Pay people what they worth. You know, you got to pay what you weigh, baby. Pay what you weigh. You got to pay. If you want quality services and quality products, respect people enough to honor their craft. And if you don't want to pay what they're charging, then go somewhere else where they do charge what you're willing to pay. But don't disrespect a person by trying to completely and deep discount what they're what they are charging because that's the way they're earning their living and paying for the things they need in their life. Right. Uh, Anyway, all that being said. Um, I, I watch um, 
or on Instagram, I say I watch, I follow somebody that I really, really love. And his name is 19 Keys, like number one, nine keys, like K-E-Y-S, 19 Keys. And I like 19 Keys. Um, and he um, was talking about, uh, he in a recent post or a recent interview that somebody interviewed him, uh, they uh, asked him, or no, he made a comment. He said, I don't trust people that eat pork. And the people that were interviewing him were kind of laughing about it, like, ah, ha, ha, you know, you're silly, blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, I'm serious. I don't trust people that eat pork. Now, his comment and me repeating it is no attack on what you personally eat, okay, or what your personal belief system is, biblically or otherwise, as it pertains to whether or not you should eat pork. I'm not here to advocate or not about that, okay? But his comment was on point with the way he evaluates a person's other decisions and can tell if this is the decision that they make, then I wonder how they're going to make other decisions, right? So what he was saying was, he said, you know, I don't trust people to eat pork. And he said, because if you know the health effects of pork in your system, in your body, you know, again, not arguing or debating about whether or not pork is right for you. I can personally say pork is not right for me. I, you know, I do eat bacon. I just got to, I got to have some crispy bacon, but otherwise I, I don't, I don't consume pork products, but not here to this, that's, that's on you. If that's what you want to do with yourself. Okay. Uh, but he said, you know, I don't trust people to eat pork. He said, because if you know, and there's so much information out there about the effects of pork on the body and the detriment to your health from consuming pork, but you still do it anyway. And he was like, so if you're going to still do that anyway, knowing what it can do to you, but you don't care enough to do it anyway, he was like, well, then it makes me wonder about how you make your other decisions, you know, the validity, the validity of your other decisions and, and, and are they great decisions or not? Because if this is something that you are willing to do to yourself, then what are you how are you deciding in other manners of life that affect other people? And um, and, and so that statement, I felt that when he said, I don't trust people that eat pork. Now, this is not an attack on people that eat pork. Okay, don't hear me wrong. I'm simply saying for this conversation, when we talk about emotional intelligence, I look at ways that people already operate for themselves and with others. And that helps me to decide, uh, we might not be a good fit, right? We might not be a good fit because I'm already watching you and I see how you do. So let's look at that when it comes to you and your life, your lived experiences, and then going forward. So for your lived experiences, aka your past, things you've already gone through, how does that play out for you? Can you think about times when you saw the signs? You saw that they were inconsistent. You saw that they were fickle, that they were finicky, that they were indecisive. They were on the fence. They really, they they were not hot or cold. They were lukewarm, which look that up in the Bible. It says that God hates when a person is lukewarm. Be either hot or be cold, but do not be lukewarm, right? People that are on the fence can't make a decision they playing both sides of the fence they got the they got one hand in this pot and one hand in that pot you know them kind of people you gotta watch them you gotta watch them because those are not the kind that you really want to get in bed with and when i say in bed i don't mean physically in bed i mean in in relationship as it pertains to business as it pertains to friendship as it pertains to whatever, you know, any kind of partnership or dealings with, okay, that way. So um, you have to watch those kind of people. And so then the story goes for my daughter. So she decides to proceed with this person. And the person has been complaining 
and whining and rushing her to get, you know, they agreed upon a certain amount of time that my daughter had to provide the deliverables for her services to this person. And, you know, the, the timing was like two weeks. And so right after, you know, the transaction took place and my daughter's like, OK, it'll be two weeks and I'll give you your deliverables. This person is already. Can you get it quicker? Can you rush it? Can you rush it? Can you rush it? Can you rush it? Can you? Now, this person was running late and this person didn't do all things they need to do on time. But now they want to rush my daughter to provide the deliverables, cut the time down, you know. And not take two weeks, want to take two days instead and rushing her processes, wanting to jump line in front of her other clients that have been waiting patiently or are, you know, they're next in line to receive whatever it is my daughter provides. This person is like, I want to jump line because my issue is urgent and I can't wait two weeks now, you know, or, and, and I and, and then when my daughter rushed and stayed up all night to prepare the deliverables and give it to the person um, in record timing. Which, you know, whatever I, you know, I told her, I try to tell her, but then this person now is complaining. Mm, could you have done that better? Mm, could you fix this? Well, she didn't allow the cake to bake. You know, she wanted to put it in the oven and take it right out in two days. You know, not really that it must my daughter sells cakes, but the, 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 the cake, the product, the service took time. It takes two weeks. This person wanted it in two days and insisted, like insisted and demanded that my daughter do this quickly. So then you lose out on quality because you wanted it quickly. You didn't want to wait the time. But I told her I could tell this person was going to be trouble for you. I knew it. So now that my daughter provided the things and now the lady's like, you know, um, I don't like it. I like it. I like it. But there's some parts that I don't like that I think you could have done better. She probably could have done them better if you gave her the time to do them better. You jumped the freaking line. So she deeply discounted my daughter's services, didn't want to pay full price. And my daughter was just like eh, eh, happy for the business and deeply discounted. I told her that's a no, no. So she discounted the price. She's been late and fickle and all these things. And now she's she jumped the line, made her stay up all night long to provide these deliverables that she really shouldn't have been doing that way. And now that she's gotten them, now she's complaining and she's not happy with com completely happy. You know, she's like 90 percent happy, but not 100 percent happy. So now she's want my daughter to redo some things and she's picking apart the project. All because my daughter didn't see the signs, listen to her mama, listen to her gut and say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I don't even think we should be doing this. I, I, I decline your offer to um, commission me for this work. I don't want to do the work. There's a there's a phrase that people are using in social media saying hashtag get somebody else to do it. And this is exactly one of those issues, baby, when I would be telling her get somebody else to do it. I will be refunding her her money. They have another a part two of their project lined up and the person has paid. And I told my daughter, I will be politely giving her her money back and I will be politely advising, um, you know, I think, you know, um, uh, the needs for your brand are amazing. You like you have an amazing brand. Um, I am excited for all the things you're going to be doing with your brand. And I think there's probably someone out there that can best suit your needs the way they need to be handled. Um, and I just don't know that I'm the best person for this. And um, and I want you to have the best. So um, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to refund your money. And, and, and I think that you should hashtag get somebody else to do it. <laughs> Okay, that's what I, I would politely let her know, baby, go on somewhere else. That's just me. But going back to you, let's think about this in relationships. Have you had a relationship where you saw up front? They were they were showing there was a song. Remember the song, y'all? It's an older song. I saw the signs. Yeah. Has it been a relationship? Somebody you dated, somebody you married, somebody you entered into a friendship with, a business relationship with, a, you know, accepted a client, became a client of someone else's, um, a schoolmate, that you saw the signs. You saw the signs and it wasn't looking good for the home team. But you were like, mm, let me let me just give them another chance. Everybody has a bad day. Everybody has an opportunity to not show up the, as the best version of themselves sometimes. Let me just give them another shot. And then when you gave them the other shot, did they still show you another sign? 
And did you make that red flag pretty and you just decided that that red flag was rather not red, but hot pink? It was pretty. It was a cute little sign. It wasn't so red. It was it was um, it was a uh, uh, neon pink, you know, Mm-mm. infrared red. <laughs> it was it was a pretty red. It wasn't a bad red. No, baby, if it's a red flag, it's a red flag. It's a red flag, not a blue flag, not a white flag, not a not a yellow flag. It's a red flag, baby. If it's burgundy, if it's hot pink, those are all still from the red family. Okay, if it's it's still a sign that it's probably not for you. That's not the person you want to deal with. That's not the organization, the agency, the school, the job, the team, the, the client, the opportunity that, that's for you. And so I want you now to turn that to um, when you're thinking about personal endeavors or business endeavors or whatever it is that whatever your lived experience is as it pertains to um, not uh, stopping and instead proceeding with something that you saw they were showing themselves. Because, you know, uh, Maya Angelou said, when a person shows you who they are, what did she say, y'all? Help me, y'all. Finish the sentence. When a person shows you who they are, believe them. Believe them, baby. Believe them. Believe them. And so um, I want you to write about that. I want you to journal about that. And I want you to tell me about that. Write about it. Journal about it. Tell me about it. Okay? Tell me about it. Tell me about a time that you ignored the sign. And tell me about a time where you saw the sign and you read the sign and, honey, you stopped. (laughs) The, The red sign that you needed was the stop sign, baby, and you did it. You stopped and you're so glad that you did. Tell me about that opportunity and that that time, too. Um, I want to know your story. And if you're ready to tell your story, if you're ready to share your expertise in a thing, I want you to hit me up at organizedenergy.co slash my story. Organizedenergy.co slash my story. And let's go to work writing and um, publishing and promoting your story. Somebody needs to hear it. They're going to be inspired by it. They're going to be encouraged by it. They're going to be blessed by it. They're going to be helped by it. They're going to be excited about it. First and foremost, I am. I am excited about your story. So I know I've got times where, baby, I missed the sign. I saw the sign and didn't want to believe that it was the sign. So I disregarded the sign, ran right through that stop sign and wish I didn't. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. If I had just abided by the sign, right? And so, and then there are times where I saw the signs and I was like, "Mm -mm, no, ma'am, not me. (laughs) And I'm glad that I I read the sign and I didn't go forward with some things or some people with some, some opportunities. So anyway, all that being said, that's all I have for you today. That's all I have for you today. Okay, I want you to rate this episode, rate this podcast um, on Apple Podcasts because that's where you can rate them at. So rate them over on Apple, rate this episode or rate this show on Apple Podcasts. Don't forget organizedenergy.co slash my story. And I can work with you, coach you through writing and planning and plotting and publishing your story, your book. Um, teaching your expertise or sharing, you know, your lived experience or whatever it is. Um, so do that, organizedenergy.co slash my story. But again, write in to me. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how you're winning. Let me know how you're winning. I want to know some good news. And if there's something I can pray with you for or pray with you about um, and stand in agreement with you on for God, do that too. Hit me up and I will be more than happy to pray for you. Um, I think that's all my announcements. (laughs) I think that's all I got. Um, So before we get out of here, I do want to let you all know, uh, child, listen, listen, Um, social media just, you know, I'm not, I'm full grown. 
And I got grown kids even. And I got things to do, y'all. And so I don't spend a lot of time on social media. But they tell me, and I know, I know, you should. When you're building a brand, you absolutely need to be there. And so I need you all to support my social media channels, y'all. Help them grow. Because, you know, I, just listen, I'm grown and I mind my business. But I know I need to spend some time over there on social media. So go over to YouTube and you can look up Organized Energy on YouTube and give me a follow. So Subscribe to the page, would you? Hit that little subscribe bell, I mean, the, the notification bell and all those good things. So subscribe to that over on YouTube. Hit the notification bell. All right, I know I already said it, but I just got to say it again. <laughs> Go on over to Instagram, find Organized Energy and do the same thing, would you? And then I'm also on LinkedIn. So find Organized Energy over there and follow as well. Um, I cannot wait until the next episode, but don't forget to hit me up and talk about this one with me. Until the next time, I want you to know I love you. God loves you. And most importantly, I want to make sure you love you. Okay? I love you. God loves you. I guess I should, I should say that's really the most important. Um, but then next to that, I want you to love you. All right? And treat you like you love you. Make decisions like you love you. All right? Don't be making just any old decision on any old thing. Make decisions for yourself based on the fact that you love you. So you're doing, you want to do what's best for you. Okay. All right. Have the best and most blessed day ever. And thank you again for sharing your time with me. All right. I'm out.